What is up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with another episode of Freelander and in this one we have the final episode before the Tour de France which will be the finale of the series. And so of course today we do have the Criterium de Dauphiné, the final real build-up race to the Tour de France for Michael Landa. Um, if we go here we can take a look at the stages coming up today. So we do have a short prologue to start. Then we have a fairly hilly stage into stage two, stage three, and a pretty flat one despite a hilly finish into Lyon. Then stage four, another time trial, 35 kilometers as well. You can see these parkours not really suiting Lander, that is for sure. Stage five, another flat one as you see. Stage six, and we have a much hillier stage right here with a pretty difficult final climb. On to stage seven, we have 4,000 meters of climbing, probably one of the queen stages, if not the queen stage of the race. You can see the final climb over 8% on average. And then we finish with another massive mountain stage. You can see the climbs right here. So looking at the squads, Bahrain McLaren will take to the Dauphiné. Landa leads the team alongside Dylan Toons, Witkowski and Jan Tratnik who are my chosen three helpers for the Tour de France as well. We also have Phil Bauhaus, Gregor Boll and Heinrich Hausler who will focus on the sprint stages. And so like I said, the short prologue today and Remco Evenepoel is the favourite. Let's get it. So we do have some very good time trialists at this race with Tratnik, Dylan Toons, Quieto, but sadly not able to get close to that best time so far. Anyhow, let's take a look at the start list for this race. We've got Alaphilippe, Avonapool. We've got no one really for Ineos with regards to the GC. We've got Roman Bardet, who we know is a strong rider nowadays after his win at LBL. Uh, but to be honest, not the strongest start list here. We do have the likes of Comrades, maybe Fuglsang and Zhao Almeida. 78 Mountain on this man now, uh, but not the strongest start list with regards to the GC. Okay then, world champion Rowan Dennis just sets off up the roads and we're next up. As you can see, I think we'll set off at around 80. See how we go. You can see Avonapool has the best time so far in this race. So just 2k to go already. As you can see, I'll drop this maybe to 75 into this very short downhill. Can we go maybe 79 to the line? Up it to 99 actually. We're going to have some energy left. And we go 90 seconds, 39 seconds down as Rowan Dennis is the leader. Alaphilippe won't beat him and Rowan Dennis takes the stage. Okay then, I was wrong. Evenepoel takes the stage by a split second ahead of Dennis. Uh, like I said, we lose loads of time. Gonna have to make this up later in the race. So quick update here, you can see Tade Pogacar wins the Giro d'Italia at 23 years old. If you remember, he's getting some revenge after he fell and lost about eight minutes on a single stage. Uh, he probably would have beaten us there last year, I think. Uh, but he beats the Ineos boys, Bernal and Carapaz. So then stage two is a punchy one, a very short one as well. And the final section of this climb is very difficult. Hopefully we can maybe gain some time in the GC here. So 12k to go in this stage and you will see we have 52 riders in this peloton, a pretty big split with, uh, we've got Bennett, I've seen Rowan Dennis is in this group as well. So some good riders are behind right now and I don't usually do this, but I have set up a little three man train. I think this is probably the best tactic today. Quieto and Toons can try and drag us into a good position um, and then hopefully we can maybe try and attack later on. So look how much we are stretching things out right now with Mikhail Kwiatkowski. This group is so, so stretched. What a job by our Polish teammate. And it's only going to get tougher right now. I'll up him to 88. He can use himself up as we head into this final climb. And I'm going to try and do this. Let's use Toons for protection. Go straight up to 84. Use our energy gel as well. And 46 riders right here. We've got Dennis. Uh, Remco Avonapool in yellow is right here. Ala Philippe as well. They surely have to try something with one of these two guys. Down to 35 riders right now as well. It's pretty steep all the way to the line though. So this has the potential to be super selective today. 
We are now down to 21 riders. Pickock, Owen Dool out the back. Uh, we're pacing super hard still with Mikhail Lander. Do I try and attack as Toons is almost done? Uh, you can see Alassand Kudos is struggling uh, and we're down to about 15 riders right now. 1.2k to go. Well, up this to 90 with Lander. Avenapool is here. We've got Alaphilippe as well. Watching out for him, of course, as always. But we're going to try and go early and get the jump on these guys. Mikhail Lander versus Alaphilippe and Roman Bardet. It's going to be close, you know. It's going to be very close. Oh my, do we take it? Do we take it? I can't call it. I think Mikhail Lander. Beats Bardet and Alaphilippe. Avenapool in fourth. And look at how select that was in the end. Almeida, Fuglsang all getting dropped today. What a stage that was then with just five riders right at the front. Madawa was there as well. But Conrad, Mulberger, Young Zhao Almeida, Fuglsang who is declining pretty rapidly it would seem now 37 at track. All losing plenty of time. Look at these time gaps. And that means we jump all the way to fifth in the GC. So then a flatter stage today, but we do have a short hill to the line, which definitely says to me that Alaphilippe is the big favourite. Let's see what we can do. So then 5k to go. We have come to the front and just 37 in this front group. I have taken a Venipool's wheel. He's going to keep us towards the front of this group, of course. I have now used my energy gel. Pesa Vakoc on the front. Um, and there are some pretty big splits. As I mentioned, those crosswinds are now taking effect. And two and a half K to go. I'm going to come to the front Bauhaus. Jump in my wheel if you can. We'll go up to 85 on this first section. Bauhaus can't quite get to our wheel though. I can maybe up this in a bit. Up to 88. Bauhaus, stay on me, stay on me. Let's go 99. Bauhaus doesn't want to listen to me though. Into the final 600 meters. I will try and sprint for it and we're going to come through. We're going to come through. Can we take it again? Will it be our second stage win? Ballerini celebrates. Oh my, Ballerini takes it. It's a painful second place because we got blocked off, I think, by Pidcock. And we get denied victory for our potential second win in a row. So that was a big shame, obviously. But we do move up to third place now. Still behind the two quick step boys, though. Evanapool and Alaphilippe going to be difficult to beat. 36 kilometers of individual time trialing up next and that only means that Evenepoel and even Alaphilippe are going to extend their leads massively to Lander. We need to aim to lose less than maybe two minutes, two and a half minutes today and really attack these guys in the later mountain stages. So Lander gets underway and we do get a plus one today and I'm just going to try and go 73 or something on the flats and push it up these short hills because there are some very, very steep, short hilly sections in this TT. So 2K to go to this first intermediate split and no surprise to see that Rowan Dennis destroying the best time so far. I've used quite a lot of energy, but hopefully we can now recover into this downhill, which we do pretty nicely. And we are 15th, 57 seconds down. However, behind us, you can see Alaphilippe fourth, 28 seconds down. And I expect his teammate Evenepoel to set an even better time. As you see, he's second, but 18 seconds down on Rowan Dennis. So I have checked, and Rowan Dennis, a minute and one second down on Evenepoel right now, as Lander now in this 15% section briefly right there. Uh, but Dennis could potentially go into the leader's jersey today, I think. Anyhow, back up to 80, as up to 13.5% right now for Mikhail Lander. So we're just coming towards this time split and I've burnt a lot of energy as you can see. Madawa up the road is 18th and Lander in 12th. Okay, that's not too bad at all. We need to try and save some energy now though. So about 4k to go for Mikhail Lander and pretty much flat to the line. And to be fair, I think I've judged that pretty nicely. Can we go 75 to the line? That would be perfect. And I was wrong because Evenepoel, now just four seconds behind Dennis, he is going to be well in the lead of the GC at the end of this stage. Alaphilippe, you can see, hunting us down as well. Can we push it maybe up to 80, 85, 99 across the line for Landa? And we finish 14th provisionally, and I'm very happy with that. Alaphilippe, though, goes second. 
45 seconds down on Dennis. Can Remco take the stage though? Here we go. And he's 11 seconds down on Dennis. And so the new GC, Evenepoel, extends his lead 36 seconds clear of his teammate Alaphilippe. Interesting to see who is the leader out of these two guys. Has to be Remco at this stage. Anyhow, Dennis up to thirds and we drop to sixth. Two minutes and 21 down. On to stage five then and a transitional stage today for the GC guys. However, our big German teammate Phil Bauhaus is the favourite. Okay then, 6k to go in this sprint stage. No real action apart from this 76-man group getting distance right now. Um, that's only just happened and you can see a lot of those guys struggling to get back in. I've taken the wheel of our sprinter Phil Bauhaus. I can't really contribute to helping him so I'm just going to follow his wheel. He should keep us in a pretty decent position at least. We have lost his wheel somewhat as you can see right now though. Maybe I can follow the Brit instead. Uh, Colour into the final one and a half kilometres. Bauhaus isn't going to be able to challenge today. We'll just make sure we stay in this group. We can sprint for it right now. Bauhaus may be late. Oh, he's been blocked absolutely terribly right there. Terrible block. It's very, very close. And Davide Ballerini gets his second win of the race so far. So we actually beat Phil Bauhaus in the end, which kind of shows how poor that sprint was, as well as how badly he was blocked in that one. Uh, no real change in the GC today. Stage six up next then and 195 kilometers. We do have this final climb average of just 5%, but 10K is going to be difficult and we are the favorites yet again. We need to attack the quick step duo of Alaphilippe and Evenepoel. So sadly, we do get, I believe, our first minus day of the race so far, uh, up to 94% fitness, but still clearly not quite in peak form. You can see we do have 19 men up the road as well. Into the final 40k then, and it's been FDJ actually pacing the hardest right now. Maybe that's for Valentin Madua, who I guess is suited to this finish today. Um, and we're down to 46 in this peloton. So 23k to go right now and still 47 in this group. The other groups haven't been able to latch back onto this one and I haven't done any relaying today. I'm not really willing to set a tempo as we're on a minor stage, just trying to conserve as much energy as possible. So into the final 10k, Kalmajan and Freyle are about to be caught, the final men from that early breakaway. George Bennett moving up, I do believe, with Knox. We've got plenty of domestiques still here for quick step. We're pacing 75. We're just trying to stay to the front of this group. Uh, we're not really feeling too good today, obviously. We just want to try and not lose any time, I think. At the back of this peloton, then, you can see we have 32 riders expecting quite a few to drop out the back right now. As you see, Pickock, Chad Hager, and plenty more going out the back. I've upped the tempo a little bit on that slightly steeper section with Kwiatkowski and he is almost done as we have Julian Alaphilippe on the attack and that's a very clever move by Quickstep because obviously we need to either follow or chase him in whilst Remco can just sit in this group and conserve his energy. Uh, let's try and pace him in with Toons right here and it seems we will do Alaphilippe not too strong right there. So Gregor Mulberger is the next man to go and you can see it flattens off a little bit to the top but we're really not feeling too good with Landa. Down to 21 in this front group with Evenepoel and Alaphilippe on our wheels. I'm unsure whether I can really attack them today but 3k to go we maybe have enough yellow you know. So Dylan Toons is now done. I'll take position in this group and see how these guys react. Uh, it is Roman Bardet coming to the front. I'm going to take his wheel if I can with Landa. Alaphilippe and Evenepoel are right here. I'm going to follow even Remco Evenepoel. He looks stronger than Alaphilippe at this race. Into the final kilometre. Can Mulberger hold on? I'm not sure. Into the final 700. Let's go on the right-hand side with Landa. But surely Alaphilippe will take this one with ease. And is it going to be a 1-2? It will be. Evenepoel will get second. We will come home in fourth place in a group of just nine riders at the front. So a quick step masterclass so far at this race. And I couldn't really do much against them today. Just try to hold on on that minus day. Hope for better race days in the coming stages. And we do move up to fifth place now ahead of Comrades in the GC. But Dennis stays in third 
and we're gonna have to try and attack these guys assuming we're feeling good in the next stage. Stage seven then, and definitely one of the two queen stages, 175 kilometers, and you can see plenty of climbs. The final climb, very steep as well. And like I've already mentioned, we need to attack Remco, Alaphilippe, and Rowan Dennis. So not good news at all, I'm afraid. Another minus one day for Mikhail Lander. So we are going to have to try and attack Remco and Julian at some point. And I think we're gonna have to try something even on this poor day. So we're now on this penultimate climb of the day. AG2R on the front pacing for their man Bard Day. In good form this season, we'll see what he can do today. I'm not going to do any pacing on this climb. Let's just try and protect our guys and see who makes it over the top. We are now over that climb then and down to 41 riders in this group. Quirto and Toons are only teammates to survive that climb as well. Let's now prepare for this massive final climb coming up. So 17k to go and AG2R assessing an absolutely rapid pace. You can see the likes of Port just going out the back with the tempo and we haven't even started the real climbing just yet. So 11k to go in this one. I'm coming to the front of this group, 43 at the front. And as I expected, the break look dead set to take this one. They have four minutes at the foot of this climb. I'll come up to 70, but I'm really worried about this one. It's proper steep. And obviously this minus one day, we do need to be careful. So Gregor Mulberger, who was in a decent position, ninth in the GC, has just punctured. Going to drop this to 72 right now as there's no real uh, team setting a tempo on the front. Quieto is now done and we're going to use Dylan Toons. We'll put him or we'll put Lander up to 65. Here we go, Mikhail Lander, or sorry, Bardet on the attack from fourth place in the GC. We'll let him go right now and try and use Dylan Toons whilst he's still here. And it will be Kenny Elsond willing to chase. That is a big surprise as there's still five riders from Quickstep in this 20-man group. What a team they have at this race. Uh, Venepool and Alaphilippe look pretty menacing. But Bardet looking very, very good early on in this climb as we come towards the final 5k. So right now, 4.5k to go, Bardet has been caught and it's 34 altogether from the breakaway and the peloton now in this group. A big old mess. Let's try and come through it though with Lambda. Um, I think we can still go on maybe 70. Uh, 32 in this group. Remco looking good. Still with uh, Bennett and Knox in this group. Barze goes again. He has Almeida and Madua following. And as I'm not feeling too good, I'm not going to follow right now. We still have tunes with 3k to go. What a ride by our Belgian teammates. Um, we're going to sit up, you know, because Bennett is still here for a quick step. They need to do the chasing and protect their yellow jersey. Let's just sit in for now. Bennett looks done. So I think we can wrap this up to 84. Try and attack with Mikhail Lander. Use our energy. Almeida is done. Alaphilippe and Comrade straight onto our wheel. Alaphilippe has cracked. Oh my. Julian Alaphilippe is gone. Remco still in that group behind. We need to pace 84 now. Barde though. Looking super, super strong into the final kilometre. We'll up this to 90. Can we catch the Frenchman? We have 50 seconds to the yellow jersey behind. What a ride by Lander. Up to 95. Let's try and attack past Roman Bardet. It's a two-horse race. Bardet will not do it. And Mikhail Lander takes the stage win. And what a beautiful win that was. We can celebrate beating Bardet. I think we'll overtake him in the GC. Just about... And you can see the time is ticking to a Venepool and Alaphilippe behind. Here we go then. Lanza beats Bardet by 12 seconds. And look at the gap to the guys behind. What a performance by these two at the front. And Mikhail Lanza jumps into yellow. Two seconds ahead of a Venepool and three ahead of Alaphilippe with Bardet just 11 seconds down. Oh my, what a race this is becoming right now. We have Bardet, Landa, Avenapool, and Julian Alaphilippe duking it out for the GC going into the final stage. What a ride today though by Dylan Toons protecting us until the final 3k of that climb. I wanted to wait to make sure that Bennett was done and it seemed he was really struggling and then we went on the attack and what a stage win that was. 
One more stage then of this Dauphiné and I have loved this race so far. We start the day as the favourite, it's a short one with some massive climbing of course. Evenepoel, Alaphilippe and Bardet, they need to attack us. We're just going to follow every move they tried today. There he is then, Mikko Lander in that yellow jersey but another minus one day today. At the moment it's free tunes and free Quirto because these guys on great form are plus four for tunes up to 78 mountain, 81 hill. Uh, these guys are gonna have to try and nurse us through this final stage though. So one climb down and 26 k to go in this one. We have just Toons and Quieto in a group of 77 riders and this final climb to conquer to stay in this yellow jersey. So 11 and a half k to go right now. You can see it's a strange climb with lots of kind of flatter and very steep sections. Like right now we have a flatter section We'll come down a bit to 70, but we can now come to the front of this group just about. Now in a much better position to react to attacks from the likes of Bardet and Alaphilippe. So we now have 8k to go in this climb. Lots of domestiques are soon to be done. And Bardet is now on the attack, right? This is the moment. We're going to switch this around. We're going to try and go like this. And Quieto is going to pace on maybe 92 starts. We have Bardet and Madawa up the road. Bardet is the man we need to watch out for though, of course. I'll go 87 with Quieto because we need to bring this man in. And now we're doing the work rather than quick step. Evenepoel now on the attack as well. Oh my, we've got Conrad trying to follow. Uh, but this could work in our favour. Let's go 88 with Toons. And Evenepoel straight past Roman Bardet. Uh, Roman Bardet. Let's protect Landa with Dylan Toons. Pace on maybe 75. But Remco look, uh, looking very good right now with Conrad on his wheel. And so somehow at this stage, we have dropped the rest of the peloton. They just weren't really aware it would seem. And Remco up the road. I'm going to push this to 85 with Landa. Hopefully we can catch him before Toons is done. And we do. Right, let's sit up in this group. Take position. Remco looks very, very tired. We don't need to push this tempo at all. However, Alaphilippe and Bardet now coming back on. We have 12 riders in this group. Two and a half K to go. Our pace on maybe 72. Remco looks very tired. So does Alaphilippe. Bardet may be the main danger today. Right, let's set up again on 60. One minute to the stage win, but we're not feeling too good into the final two kilometers. So we need to be wary because Alaphilippe, Bardet and Avenipool all probably better sprinters than Lander. Let's go up to 84. Hopefully these guys can't really stand the finish. I'm going to follow Roman Bardet into the final kilometer. I think Remco, he's not quite done. We have 800 meters left. Let's push this to 99 with Landa. And luckily there are no bonus seconds available, which means they can't win. We just need to stay in the same group as these guys. And we're going to sprint past them. Mikhail Landa wins the Dauphiné ahead of Bardet, Alaphilippe and Remco Venepool. So David De La Cruz takes the stage win, but Mikhail Landa in the end gains 11 seconds on our three main rivals. And as you can see, we win the Dauphiné ahead of Remco and Alaphilippe Bardet just off the podium. 22 seconds down, but fourth place overall. What a race that was then. I think we played pretty nicely because if we tried to attack up to the breakaway and these guys could then out sprint us, Alaphilippe and Remco would have taken the GC. So good to play defensively and we get the GC win in the end. So I have decided we will try and include the Spanish national champs in this episode as well. That starts with the TT today in and around Bilbao. Of course, not expecting anything with Landa. So Mikhail coming into the final kilometer and we're about to collapse right here. We'll see the heart rate drop in a moment. There you go. We are done 500 meters out from the line. I think we're going to drop back a fair few positions at this split and we finish eighth. Three minutes down though on Marc Soler. So Marc Soler finishes in first. He takes home the title. We finish 14th with Landa. The road race is what we're really about though. So this is the one we have been waiting for. The road race of Spain. And this is the man we have to beat. We know how good Ivan Garcia Cortina is in this save. Quite a few hills. It suits him very well today. Hopefully we can try and attack him with Landa. So 57k to go. You can see I am on the front right now with Landa. 
trying to keep this gap to the breakaway in check. It's up to four minutes right now. And it seems that Lopez and Sanchez, the only real domestiques, not really strong enough to work. So we now do approach the final climb of this race. And sadly, I don't think it's going to be for Mikel Landa in this one. We're going to try and attack again. It's our only real option, I do believe, because no one pacing in this peloton. And as soon as we attack, obviously, they try to follow us. But three and a half minutes to that break is too little too late, I do believe. So I have now been joined up the roads by Izaguirre and Garcia Cortina. You can see these guys feeling much better than me. I'm willing to work with them though into the final eight kilometers. Uh, but that group up the road still one minute and 45 seconds with 5k to go. I'm pretty certain they have this race in the bag. So we'll try again as we're caught by this group on this little climb to close this gap and get away from the peloton. Three riders up the road yet again, but they're not really willing to work with me. Garcia Cortina is the best sprinter in this group. He needs to be the one to pull. He's not really willing to though as Friday now on the attack. Sadly, this isn't going to be for Lander this year and I do believe the breakaway will take the win. Let's take a look at the finish line. 1k to go for those guys. We can probably just sprint with Lander. We're not going to finish well and you can see it is the Kaja man, uh, Nicolas Lecuona, who takes the Spanish national championship. No title for Lander again this year. So one objective I definitely had for Landa at the beginning of this save was winning the national champ, but we haven't been able to do it. And with no teammates and not being allowed in the break, those two things just didn't enable us to win this race today. Anyhow, guys, that'll round out this episode. You can now see we're in to July and tomorrow the Tour de France, the final race of this series does begin hope you're looking forward to it we're going to go and try and complete the triple crown of the Giro Vuelta and Tour de France anyhow drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it today subscribe to my channel if you're new and I will see you at the Tour de France